Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello. Today we are going to discuss the quantum mechanical treatment of various interactions of an atom. And the atom is the simplest possible atom we can think of that is the hydrogen atom. Why you discuss this? Because the simplest system which is paramagnetic. So, to discuss any quantum mechanical properties we must start with this Hamiltonian. So, what is the Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom? As you all know, Hamiltonian operator is a sum of this kinetic energy operator and the potential energy operator. For a hydrogen atom, this T and V can be written as in the kinetic energy operator, which is kinetic energy of the electron and the kinetic energy of the proton. So, this will be this is the kinetic energy operator for the electron and kinetic energy operator of the proton. These are the Laplacian operator and the potential energy B is the elect the Coulomb attraction between the two. So, so this is minus z square by r, where r is the distance between the electron and proton. So, in a particular coordinate system, if I have x, y, and z, let us say here the electron is sitting, the proton is sitting, then this distance is r. And for each of these coordinates here and here, I have got the corresponding operators. Now, in magnetic resonance, we really do not worry at all about these type of interactions. So, these are treated to be a constant energy that the system has. What we are interested in is over and above this interaction, what are the magnetic interactions which are responsible for the magnetic resonance spectrum in general and an EPS spectrum in particular. So, these terms are not used at all, they are just giving rise to a constant energy of the system. So, what are the magnetic interactions that this atom has? So, if we put this hydrogen atom in a magnetic field, then the interactions that we can think of is the Zeeman interaction here. So, this is the magnetic moment interacting with the magnetic field give rise to the corresponding operate energy. So, for electron the magnetic moment comes from the spin angular momentum and this is the relationship. So, it is operator for Zeeman interaction is G E beta E S dot B. Similarly, for the nucleus it is G N beta and I is the magnetic moment of the nucleus. So, that gives the Hamiltonian for the nuclear Zeeman interaction which is G n beta n i dot b. In addition, there is another interaction that is possible which comes from the magnetic dipole dipole interaction. I have one let us say magnetic dipole coming from the proton, another magnetic dipole coming from the electron. So, these two magnetic dipole can interact and that is shown here this slide. This is the let us say direction of the electric dipole moment, this is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment in certain x y z coordinate system and this is the distance between the two. So, this energy of these two magnetic dipole depends on the orientation of these two dipoles. In fact, it is the relative orientation of them that matters. The energy is given as this. So, it not only depends on the magnitude of the dipole, but also distance between them 
and the orientation of mu with respect to r mu with respect to r. So, so therefore, this interaction is directional dependent and we call it anisotropic interactions. Now, what will be the corresponding operator for this? We simply replace the magnetic moment of each of them by their corresponding operators in terms of the angular momentum. So, mu e is replaced by g e beta e s, mu n is replaced by g e n beta n i in a similar fashion. This is the expression for the dipole dipole Hamiltonian operator for electron nuclear interaction. Now, this dipole dipole interaction of is such that its average value turns out to be 0. So, when the species is tumbling rapidly, let us say in liquid or, uh, or gas and their collisions of atoms, then the average value of this energy becomes 0. But how do you visualize that this energy of interaction becomes 0? It is not very obvious from this type of operator or this type of energy expression for that. Of course, one can calculate and, turn and find out that indeed that is 0 if we take care of all possible orientations, but let us try to understand at least qualitatively whether this energy can be 0. So, for that this is the uh, schematic uh, representation of two magnets let us say mu 1 and mu 2 they are uh, kept at a distance r and they are aligned such a way that mu 1 forms an angle phi with respect to r and mu 2 forms an angle theta. Then what we have here is let us see mu 1 mu 2 and this is r vector. So, if I keep this in a magnetic field then both of them will get aligned along the magnetic field. So, you put it here then what will be the corresponding energy of interaction if their orientation changes and also uh, go from let us say one alignment to other alignment and this is shown here. This is the direction of the external magnetic field and let us say one magnetic moment is fixed here and other one is moved from this arrangement to this arrangement. Here these two magnets are parallel to each other. So, north pole is pointing to north pole, south pole is pointing to south pole. So, this energy will be repulsive. So, we call the energy is positive. Same is true if this magnet is brought here. On the other hand, when second magnet is pointing in this direction and, and uh, at the top of this first magnetic moment mu 1, then you see here the north and south here north south are pointing in such a way that there will be attractive interaction. So, this north is pointing to south. So, the energy of interaction will be negative here same is true here. So, approximately in this region the energy of interaction is negative and same is true here and in this region is positive and this energy is positive. So, it turns out that if we really look at the interaction operator in detail the angle of approximately 54 degree is the defining angle within which this rather within this cone of this interaction region where the energy is negative here also energy is negative and exactly in this along this region the energy of interaction becomes 0. So, the two regions are divided such a way that somewhere energy is positive and somewhere the energy of interaction is negative. So, here now if the system is tumbling very rapidly that all possible regions are covered equally then one could conceivably assume that this total energy actually becomes 0. That is indeed the case if we do the calculation uh, exactly for all possible orientations. So, in solution EPR spectrum for example, 
when the species is tumbling very, very rapidly, then one can ignore this interaction. But it cannot be ignored if let us say solution is viscous and tumbling is not very rapid or if the species is uh, held in a solid state or in a frozen solution, then the tumbling is uh, restricted very severely. So, we cannot neglect this interaction, but for our purpose right now, let us neglect this. So, what other type of interaction this uh, electron nuclear can have? That is called electron nuclear hyperfine interaction. It is a special type of interaction which does not depend on the direction, it is called an isotropic interaction and also a special requirement is that the electron sort of sits on the magnetic nucleus. So, unlike here the dipole level interaction there, here if the let us say this is the nucleus which is proton for hydrogen atom of course, electron is moving all over this is the decided by the orbital of the electron. Now, if the, there is some finite probability that electron actually occupies this place, this is what I call sitting on the proton, then that interaction is a special type of interaction that is called the electron nuclear hyperfine interaction. It was proposed by Fermi. The expression is given here. See, just like dipole double interaction, this also depends on the strength of the magnetic moment of electron and the magnetic moment of nucleus, but it also depends on this probability of finding the electron at the nucleus. So, if the psi is the wave function of this electron which is describing its motion around the nucleus, then psi 0 and the square of that gives the probability of finding the electron at the nucleus. Now, for those orbitals which satisfies this requirement that this has to be non-zero, then this expression shows that this isotropic electron nuclear hyperfine interaction will be non-zero. So, not all orbitals have this property. We know from the property of hydrogen orbitals, it is that S type of orbital. For example, 1 s, 2 s, etcetera. On the, so, here if we plot the, the wave function square as a function of the distance from this nucleus r, then this is psi r square. So, this for 1 s orbital, it goes down exponentially. So, at r equal to 0, this is value is non-zero. Similarly, for 2 s orbital, it looks like something like this, this could be 2 s orbital. So, for all the s orbitals, there is finite probability of finding the electron at the nucleus. In contrast, if we take other type of orbital, let us say p orbital, this is a 2 p orbital. Similarly, d and other orbitals there. Here, the at the nucleus, the probability is exactly 0. So, for these sort of orbitals, there will not be any such electron nuclear hyperfine interaction, but for these orbitals it will be. So, for hydrogen atom this is of course, the exact form, but for other system let us say free radical species this will be the corresponding wave function of that electron which is producing the uh, interaction and probability of finding that electron at the particular nuclear site has to be used here. So, this whole of this term here is replaced by a constant called A, is a parameter in fact. 
So, this constant is called hyperfine coupling constant or hyperfine splitting constant. Now, these two terms Though they are used often synonymously, they may not mean exactly the same thing. Let us right now let us understand there is just a subtle difference what I mean by that. In this Hamiltonian isotropic Hamiltonian I write a s dot i. So, here this is an energy of interaction. So, here a gives the strength of the interaction, the a gives the strength of interaction. So, here the I will be calling it as hyperfine coupling constant with coupling interaction between the electron dipole and the nuclear dipole. So, when it is measured in the units of energy this is the call coupling constant. Now, we will see that this will of course, show its presence by splitting the EPR spectrum. So, in the EPR spectrum is measured as a function of magnetic field generally. So, we measure something from the experiment. So, which is a measure of the splitting in terms of the magnetic field let us say. So, so, this interaction causes splitting in the spectrum. So, whatever property we measure from here the measure of the splitting that is of course, related to this one, but that splitting that we measure from the experiment will be called the hyperfine splitting constant and we will see how they are related later. So, I have already said that psi 0 square gives the probability of finding the electron at the nucleus and this is non-zero only for electrons in S type of orbitals. So, this Hamiltonian where we are dealing only with the magnetic interactions such as this electron z 1 interaction, nuclear z 1 interaction and the Hurfman interaction. So, so, this type of Hamiltonian are called spin Hamiltonian, where we see we, uh, you see that we do not include the kinetic energy of the various constituent particles or potential energy that they have. Only this interaction energies are included in the spin Hamiltonian. Now, if the magnetic field B is along the z direction. Then this Hamilton operator can be written as Let's say B zero S Z minus G E G elect nuclear Z one S z i z. This can be written as sum of two components plus this is one component plus another component we will see why you do that in a moment. 
this term which involves the x and y this is a mistake s x i x plus s y i y. So, this can be written in terms of the raising and lowering operator s plus minus equal to s x plus minus i s y. So, s x gives s plus plus i minus 2 and s y is equal to s minus minus y 2 i. Similarly, we can write for the i x and i y. Then s x plus i x for example, this becomes s plus plus s minus by 2 into s which gives s x plus i x plus Similarly, if we take the other one by putting this one, then this term will cancel out. So, what we see here that the simplification of this will turn out to be this way that electron Z1, nuclear Z1, and this Sz as a plus, this is the term that comes out to be S plus i minus plus S minus i plus by 2. So, we have the Total Hamiltonian is tan B0 Sz Iz plus A Sz Iz plus A by 2 s plus i minus plus s minus i plus. Here now let us see the relative magnitude of the various interactions. This is the electron z1 term, this is the nuclear z1. So, we know that magnetic moment of electron is about 2000 times higher than this. So, this will be the most dominant interaction. This will be very, very small compared to that one. And this magnitude of the hypervine coupling constants is also not very large. So, this will still be the dominant interaction. This is usually very small. So, what we do now is that we treat this as the unperturbed Hamiltonian or main Hamiltonian plus this is the perturbation. So, our A is 0 is equal to that is it. This is the main Hamiltonian and quarter represent Hamiltonian is A by 2 minus plus S minus I plus this one. With this approximation, we will see how the energy level that appears for the hydrogen atom in the next discussion. We stop here now.